If ever there was a challenging project, I think this is it. I'm calling this the birdcage armoire, and you'll see why, but this was really in rough shape. Some broken things, cracked legs, separated wood trim. It's been on the back patio for years and years and weathered. So this is gonna be like refinishing an old barn. We'll see how much we can fix. There is a bird inside. Owner was originally gonna paint it red, but we went with a neutral color instead. I think that was a good choice. Before I get started with something that's especially peeling paint so badly, I wanna make sure I do a lead test. So these lead test strips are easy to get. They're on Amazon, mix them with water, and then swab, swab, swab. You test it against the strip on the container. The light color is no lead. The very dark red is positive for lead. So we're all good. Time to get started. There's so much paint that's just flaking and peeling off. I thought, let me grab my vacuum and see if that will help. So I tried to vacuum a lot of it off and I got some off, but ultimately I just went in for the scraper. I got lots of questions about why I was not just going in with a sander. And those dowels that are all over the drawers and everywhere are actually kind of delicate. So I didn't want to just run in with a sander, um, but it also had layers and layers and layers of thick paint. So someone had refinished this and painted it in lots of layers of, I think it was a chalk paint. So there's no way I could put my paint on top of this or it would just flake off as well. So the painstaking process of removing all of this from all of the dowels. The scraper I found out really was the best thing. Um, you'll see here how easy the scraper is just taking off this paint. Look at it falling on the floor. It's almost crystallized, it's so weathered. So in some areas, it just came off. It, it just like literally crystallized and came right off onto the floor. This was the fun part. I think doing this drawer was the most satisfying part of all it because it just came right off. It was so happy. I was so happy and it was so easy, but this would be the last easy part of this entire project. So I'll take it where I can get it. Going with the sander, I wanted to get at least some part of this done so I could set it to the side and say, okay, that part is ready. So I sanded it. And again, this wood is, it's very rustic. It's very weathered. So it's not going to come out perfect. But again, I'm sanding like a barn. Um, back with the scraper. Lots of curved areas. So I just have to be careful. I am using some sanding blocks to get into that trim because it's curved in several directions. May it's kind of hard to tell from this perspective, but it curves in and it curves out. So these sanding blocks are amazing. How productive were, was I today? That pile will tell you. Here's my progress. I'm about two days in at this point. I've got a lot scraped, but at the bottom of each of these dowels, the carbide scraper doesn't get to, so I have to go in with, I'm using a sanding net and just do the bottom of every single one. And you have to do each side. Essentially, a dowel comes down to four sides, each side, front and back. So everything that I do, I have to do it four times. I believe there are 12 sections of dowels, a little before and after. And this was really just a process of trying to figure out how to get sanding nets or sandpaper into each area. One door done. Yay, making progress. I have another little scraper that's a detail scraper. And this one actually was working really well. You'll see it has different heads that you can change and those are curved. And once I got this one going on the dowels, it made the work a little faster. It also worked on some of this trim just to kind of get in those crevices that was going to be really difficult with just sandpaper. So I have to go over this a bunch of times. I won't bore you with the whole thing, but every little nook and cranny in between every dowel, uh, there were gobs of paint on these. This is the second or third pass, just getting the, the very last little bit. And the shelving. It was also just really thick. See, I'm putting some muscle into this. 
This took quite a long a time to scrape this off. And again, I just found that the scraper was faster than the sander. So after getting the bulk of the paint off with the scraper, I then do go in with the sander, get some more of that off of there. The sander worked pretty well in some areas and then not at all in others, so off to the scraper again. And it's just a painstakingly slow process. I originally thought I would be done with this and just, I thought, oh, I can turn this around in probably two weeks. But it was so labor intensive and of course I had a vacation planned in the middle, so it took a bit longer, but my client was so patient. This was so much work. So scraping, scraping, scraping. You don't realize, I guess sometimes you, until you're having to scrape and look at every single little surface, how many surfaces there are. Every side, front, back, left, right, but the carbide scraper is making progress. I think I keep taking these videos just so I can look at them and see, okay, I am making progress. I've got more to do up around the top. I've got the legs still to do, that top trim, but making progress. Inside, really coming along. I still have the top up there to do. And again, all this flaking paint off of the trim. And then of course I have to protect that mural the whole time as well. So I do have to be very careful around it because we're keeping that. So I'm, I work around it, but I just am being very mindful not to touch it. Some of the paint's disintegrating on the mural as well. Okay, so some of this wood is so dry and cracked that it's separated. There's no way that I could clamp it and force it to go back. It's just not gonna go back. So I'm using a, a really heavy duty wood filler this is a premium wood filler by DAP. It's, it's a much um, higher strength than the traditional brown wood filler. The top of this is very warped and there's places where you can see daylight through it. So I'm gonna fix that. My first thing was to lay it down. Of course, you've gotta scrape off the old paint or the Bondo that I'm gonna use on there won't adhere. So scrape, sand, sand some more. Keep on sanding until you can't sand. And in with the Bondo. I thought about several different products of what I could have used here. Ultimately, because I know this is gonna go back outside, I wanted something that would be able to just hold up to uh, the elements. And I chose Bondo because I really think it'll just be the strongest thing. I had to do the top and then of course the inside as well because it was so warped. So there was a side panel that was completely warped and out of shape and broken. So I got it back into its place. These are wood supports that are being glued in and clamped so it doesn't move. Okay, time to protect this mural from paint. Delicate surface tape. And this is what I'm first going to use around the mural so that when I put this plastic on there with the blue tape, I'm going to put it on top of the purple tape. These are great if you don't have these. They just roll on out. There's tape already on the plastic. And it's got a cutter and everything right on it. So you can just put it right on your surface, cut it, and then tape it, and pull the plastic down. I use this mostly, one, for doing things like this, but I also like to use it for taping drawers. It doesn't just go right around the edge and then you pull that over the rest of the drawer. It works great. So a couple of layers of this and that mural should be very well protected while I start painting. And here it is, all ready to go. One last look before I get my spray tent all set up. I've got to use the jumbo tent on this one. This is a big piece and it goes I'm gonna start with it laying down um, I can also do the there's the other little shelves that go inside and the drawers but I'm gonna start with it laying down so I can get the top and then underneath that trim like the skirt area around the legs I just like to make sure everything's covered 
If they were standing up, it just makes it really difficult to get up underneath a lot of these areas. And being that this is gonna go back outside on the patio, I wanna make sure everything is covered with paint so that it's uh, just protecting the wood. This is a primer that I'm using. I use Styx primer. It's made by Insulex. It is a bonding primer. I have it tinted. Even though I'm gonna be painting this white, I always tint my primer. So this is tinted gray primer that's on. I did three coats of primer. Again, this is like painting a barn. So the wood's very dry, very absorbent. And I wanna make sure everything is very well protected. I'm just painting as much as I can with it laying down. Most of it's gonna get painted once I get it standing up. Ready to go for lots and lots of paint. Okay, so as I mentioned, several coats of primer. I also did three coats of paint. I'm using the Evolution line of farmhouse paints. This is the color Hybrid Beige. It's just a really nice neutral. It's that kind of vintagey white without being too yellow. This is a really great paint. It cures very hard. It is a paint that can be used indoor and outdoor. Um, it has built-in primer, built-in top coat, and although I do prime and I top coat on top of it, I just like the added durability of it. So I did multiple primer, multiple layers of paint, multiple layers of top coat. I just didn't show all of it. And now is the nerve wracking part of taking this off and hoping that the mural was protected. That delicate tape did pretty well, but that blue tape on top, oh boy, some of these areas were pulled off. Oh no. So I have some repairing to do. So I got out all my blue paints and decided I would just mix some colors and see what I could do to blend some things in. And I made a bunch of different blues and found now the mural itself has lots of different colors of blue, so I had to do different colors in different areas. And I just started blending. So the areas closer to the barn are very white, almost, you know, just very light blue, almost white. I added some more kind of clouds so that it would blend. Here's the damaged yellow part, and here it is repaired. I forgot to video it. But all of the repairs to the mural are done, and I think if I didn't tell you that it had been damaged, you wouldn't know. And here it is. The birdcage armoire is done. Wow, this was quite a project. I'm so happy I could get this done for my client so she can enjoy it for many more years to come.